Welcome to Word Connect with Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, a teaching ministry where believers are trained to be established in the truth of God's Word. For more information and free downloads, please visit www.thepastormax.ng. Praise God. Realize now. Realize, right? Go to the market right now. You discover that things are on the high. And you know the good thing about our beautiful people? Even when the virus is over, nobody's bringing their price down. Are you following? So this is the new normal. So you realize that we live in a system where there's absolute no control. There's no control over market prices. There's no control over housing prices. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It's a system that is lawless. So if you are not wise, you cannot prosper in the system. And that's why wisdom is critical. Come on, say wisdom is critical. I can't hear you. Say wisdom is critical. For you to be able to thrive. In John chapter 6, this morning we're looking at frugality and prosperity. Frugality and prosperity, what it means to be frugal so you can prosper. We live in a tough system. We live in a, in a system that one man will steal all what belongs to everybody and keep hundreds of people unemployed. And yet they don't care. Sadly, some of these people sit in church all the time. And so if the wisdom of God is not applied in your life, it's a system where you cannot lift your head. John chapter 6, look at this story. And after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. Verse 3, and Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, seeing a great multitude coming towards him. He said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? Bread has been saving lives for a long time. Thank God for bread. <laughs> but this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. And Philip answered, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew Simon's Peter brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has got five belly loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? And that's one thing in life. Never despise what you have. Never despise that job you have. You know, I've heard people, you know, you know, sometimes I've heard people say, you know, this is my job. He's not paying me. He's just small. He's just my. Tell them, you know what? I mean, we're not saying you shouldn't strive for more, but all you have to do is to look at the unemployed people around you and just stay grateful and keep building and keep tilling. What, wherever you complain, you cannot find increase. Be grateful. Hallelujah. Come on, are you here with me? Be grateful. Look at this. Then Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So men sat down in number about 5,000. You know where there are 5,000 men? Women and children are going to be more. So we can see about 15,000 people were here. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with fragments of the five belly loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. Can you imagine this? He says, gather the fragments. The, 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 the NIV says, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. The New Living Translation says, gather the leftovers so nothing is wasted. In Psalm 50 verse 10, the Bible says, the cattle of a thousand hills belong to God. In Haggai chapter 2 verse 8, it says, the silver is mine, the gold is mine. Can you imagine the whole world belongs to God? As rich as God is, as powerful as God is, he said, gather the fragments. He said, let nothing go to waste. I mean, and I can imagine the disciples, Peter, like, what, what kind of man is this? As rich as this, our master. He can multiply bread. You still tell somebody to be gathering fragments. This man is stingy. Do you know how they would have felt, right? Going through the field and gathering fragments of bread, fragments of fish, fragments of bread, fragments of fish. 
And I can imagine Jesus in my mind saying, no, pick that one. Yes, that one, pick it, pick it. And 12 baskets. Look at what they wanted to waste. What they wanted to waste was more, more a hundred times more than what they had to start the miracle. One day, a man of God was praying and was believing God for a lot of money. He said, oh God, bless me with this money so I can do this. Bless me with this money so I can do this. Bless me with this money so I can do this. A year later, he's, he was praying and said, Lord, that money I've been believing you for did not come. And God said, go back to your accounts. And he checked and he saw that whatever they were believing for came twice. But because it did not come as a lump sum, he couldn't gather it. What I'm teaching you now is something that the Lord has dealt with us is in the office. You know, most times people come to work for us or we send people on errand. We normally do not keep change. We just have maybe like 500 naira or something. And we'll just give people, oh, give just to go down. One month, we looked at how much we were giving people for transport. It was so much. And God brought this verse to me. Right now, if you come to do anything for us, we have 50 naira. We have 20 naira. We have 10 naira. We have 100 naira. Gathering the fragments. How come God has enabled us to build something like this without having to raise offerings? We gather the fragments. You know, most times when you build like this, people in their mind feel that there is one billionaire somewhere that is just saying, give me the cost, I will pay. Give me the cost, I will pay. It's a lie. Building is by gathering the fragments and being patient. Some of us are very wasteful. We waste food. You raise your children to select food at will because in your mind you are a big man. Cook indomie, they look at it. Say, I don't like the face of the indomie. It's too yellowish. So okay, don't worry. What do you want? I can't be your father. You don't like the face. You don't have to like the face of anything to eat it. You just eat food. In our mind, it's a sign of prosperity. But we are raising a generation that will be wasteful. I don't want to mention names because we're, 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 we're going all over the world. But we know a particular wealthy man in this country that was very wealthy. Had chains of businesses. Football clubs all over the place. Many years down the line, ask yourself, where is that? If you don't train your children to stop waste... They will waste whatever inheritance you have suffered to lay, lay up. And by the time they grow up, there will be nothing. Indulging your children in a wasteful lifestyle is destroying their destiny before they get up. Praise God. My kids, sometimes they have their savings, they save their piggy bank or whatever bank they have that they keep their money. I remember before I came one time, they had spoiled the remote for the television in the house. They contributed money to buy it. The remote is 2,000. We, we, as the parents of the house, were responsible for 1,000. You bring 500, you bring 500. It's not a prayer point. To be honest, buying that remote, it won't do anything to me. But I won't raise vagabonds because God has blessed me. You take when you spoil something, you take responsibility for it. It's not a sign of prosperity to be wasteful. Frugality means to manage your resources to avoid waste. For some of you, it is suya every evening. Suya every evening. Once he, the, the bus driver of your company knows you now, once he gets to the suya, you he says, oh, guy, you, you go come down. Say, yes, I will come down. He knows that's not your house. In the morning, they pick you from your house. In the evening, they drop you in the suya place. Once they are there, they will start matching break. It, then, because they know you. So you have even started removing seatbelt. So, immediately the man sees you. He does not call you your name again. You just say 300. Say yes. You are now 300. Because that's what you buy daily. Daily. So, once you come, they give you VIP treatment. Because they know tomorrow. In fact, when the suya man does not see you, he does follow up. Sir, I've not seen you for some time. I said, I know where. So I, I, I talk and see my customers. You are there. The other man does follow up on you because you are consistent. So 300 times 362 days. Because even Sunday, you, you, you stroll there to relax. Waste. 
Some of you will buy things you don't need. Pairs of shoes you might never use. And yet, you want God to prosper you. God is against waste. You have to track your life. Some of you, the waste is data. Subscription. Subscript. Even you are owing MTN now. Say, borrow. Just borrow. I'll pay. Borrow. I'll pay. Don't live a life of debt. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Come on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't live a life of debt. If you want to prosper, and let me tell you something, prosperity and increase will save you a lot in this life. Not just for yourself, but the ability to help people. You might see a young person who needs support to be able to go to school. You want to help them, but you don't have. You cannot help people when you don't have. But how would you have if you waste whatever God is giving to you? If some of us would check how much has passed through our life, we'll see that actually we're millionaires. But everything was wasted. You did a project. They paid you 100000 in a month. You went into town like the prodigal son. Look at that. That's what the Bible says. In, in Luke 15, 13, it says he spent all the father gave him on riotous living. The word riotous in the New Living Translation, it says he spent it on wasteful living. Wasteful living. Come on, give me that scripture quickly. Luke 15, 13. The prodigal son. He says, oh, father, give me your inheritance. I've done a teaching on the prodigal son before. I don't know whether I will still have it available. And the first thing I said is that the prodigal son collected the money of his father, but not the wisdom of his father. What he needed was the wisdom of his father. How did his father grow to be able to build this level of wealth? Look at this. He squandered this estate with loose living, wasteful living. That's why you see that when money starts coming to a place, the activities of commercial sex workers increase. Because that is one way that men waste money. By the time they have rubbed your head in ways they shouldn't rub it. First, say, I need phone. Say, order it, order, order. And I've always said this getting married and having a wife in the house is way more cheaper, more economical, more frugal than keeping a girlfriend and dating for four years, five years, six years. Always taking people out. Oh, you want to go out? 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 You realize that some of you are richer in this lockdown. And, and some people also haven't learned because immediately the lockdown is they will go and waste everything they have gathered. I just like to go out. I just like to, to stroll out. I just like to relax. Wasteful living. Wasteful living. And you know what? And I tell you all this all the time. When you have a relationship with a man who is, you know, in your mind, ah, this is my guy, he can spend. He wants to just tell him, he just spend. Ah, the man, hey, I just thank God. Oh, God has really blessed me. Oh. You know, when you are thanking God like this, on this side of the relationship, is a good man. By the time you get married and you realize that he has already cultivated that habit of spending, you now realize that he's not a good spirit. If you are going out with any person and they never ask you, what are you saving? What are you building? The easiest thing to spend is other people's money. Are you following what I'm saying? Take somebody out. You bought exotic. You gave her one cup. Tasted it. Oh, I don't like it. Don't like this. You don't like. You will drink that. That exotic. <laughs> you don't have to. We have ordered it. It's not a, a. No, 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 no. You don't make progress in life like that. People, people, people drink lime now. Don't they drink lime? You close your eye and drink it. They bought this one. You don't like. They bought this one. You don't. And they have opened everything. One five. You don't like one five. <laughs> you are joking. 
So I want to, I'm testing you if you love me. I have failed that test. <laughs> I have failed it. <laughs> Jesus said, gather the frag. You know, I want you to imagine. Can you think of this in your mind? Jesus asking his disciples to go and pick pieces of bread and pieces of fish together to make 12 baskets. Imagine how much would have been wasted if Jesus did not gather the fragments. How much has been wasted in your life because you're not gathering the fragments? Royal trust living, wild living. We live in a society that celebrates wild living. I remember one time someone came to me. Hey, you know, they, they've got a funeral and they divided the, this to him. And I now said, listen, if the man you people are planning to bury saw all this money in his life, at least he would have lived a lot longer. We live in a culture where a man would die and then people would build a house to bury him inside. Those are the kind of contributions I will never be part of. For what? Ah, Papa has died. Let's build him a house. We can't bury him outside. They will bury him outside. If you people have thought of that before now, why is it that death releases resources from us? Huh? You know the re simple reason? It's not the man. We want to show people that we have. It's not the man. Forget the man. The man is not pursuing anybody. You know all these things, eh? It's a belief system. You see, like Muslims, immediately they finish. They bury the neck. The, 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 if you were a Muslim, you would not believe all these things. Even some culture in India, they just cremate the man, just set the person on fire and gather the ashes. Match, how much is matches? <laughs> matches are fair. Two five. You are, you are, you are, don't bury her. And it, they are not pushing anybody in India. You know, you do first burial. They've stopped second burial, right? Because I know they used to do second burial in my, in my people. They still do second burial. We should all just die and follow the man and escort him properly so that we know that he has finally arrived. A culture of waste. Culture of waste. Go to sleep. Television is on. Lights are on. Everything free. Just get the things on. Culture of waste. If you don't deal with waste, you will never prosper. Because we live in a culture that is full of showmanship. What is the definition of frugality? The quality or state of being frugal, careful management of material resource, especially money. And frugality has a very surprising root. When I was studying it, when you look at the, 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 the Latin word, where it came from, it means fruit of value. It means fruit of value and restraint. It's almost like saying that you get the value of something by restraining yourself. You get the value. You begin to progress. You begin to prosper because you are doing what? Restraining yourself. If money is not properly managed, it does not last forever. And that's why you must learn how to manage money. How to steward money on the earth realm. Frugality is enjoying the virtue of getting good value. Frugality means being conscious of your spending and focusing on few financial priorities. Is this thing a financial priority? <clears throat> glory to God. Come on, is somebody in this service this morning? I said, glory to God. Proverbs 13, verse 11. Dishonest money dwindles away. But whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. Whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. I remember how there was a time things were very tough for our parents. My, my parents were teachers and government wasn't paying then and they had all this IMF stuff, structural program, Babangida era and everything. And my mom went to start, start trying to learn tailoring and all the rest. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and, and you know, these thrift collectors used to come, they would sign five naira, sign ten naira on the card. How many of you know those thrift collectors? And that's how some of our parents were able to gather our school fees, gather our house rent. You know your house rent will expire in December. You are living as if you're the owner of the town in January. Buy shoes. Buy shirts. Buy shirts. Sewing. Every party you are sewing new shirts. Say, weave them. Weave the tea, weave the ground. Weave them. Weave them. 
weaving shirts. November, you start harassing everybody. God has blessed you for us. God has blessed you for us. If God has lifted you up, it's to lift other people. Be quoting parable. Why won't God lift you so you lift other people? Why are you the one they are always lifting up? And meanwhile, if you take maybe 5% of your monthly income every month and save it, you will pay your rent without harassment, but you will not. Wasteful living. Praise God. Come on, are you here? Are you learning something? Because I believe that God wants to prosper us in this church. And we must learn frugality. Hallelujah. <laughs> Look at this. Do you live in translation? Wealth gotten from gets rich quick schemes quickly disappears. Wealth from hard work grows over time. It grows over time. It's, it's also the same way if water keeps leaking from a ship, it will sink it. Just as you gather little by little, you increase. If you keep spending little by little without tracking, you would also get into poverty. You know, people just, people just say, oh, one day I'm going to have this money. It's been 10 years. Why don't you plan with what you have? Praise God. Come on, are you still here? Why don't you plan with what you have? While you are waiting for that big day, you are going to hammer, you are going to blow, you are going to kill everybody because you now have money. Did that day come? Why don't you manage what you have? Why don't you live based on what you have? That's why sometimes when I talk to fellow ministers, I don't understand why ministries go in debt because of programs. You now bring a big star to come and sing for one hour. Hundreds and thousands are gone. You'll not be struggling to pay. Proverbs 21, verse 17. He who loves pleasure will become a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not become rich. Some of us will live in this town. Look at what your parents built with the little places they worked. Some of your parents worked little. Maybe some even as cleaners, as nurses, as, you know, um, they work with companies and all the rest. And they laid one block upon the other, one block upon That boasting you are boasting, his family house, this is my family house. If I see any bike man pass here, I will kill somebody. It's my family house. It was built by your father with less amounts. You are earning 100000 inside family house. You are still collecting money from your grandmother. You are still loaning money from the old woman. And you know the old woman is old. He cannot remember how much you loan. again. You are scammy. You are actually a yahoo yahoo boy to your grandmother. And in your mind is wisdom. How much are you earning a month? 80000 is nothing. Let me tell you something. If you live in an environment like us, you will have high... How do I put it now? Let me put it this way. You will be very ungrateful when the money people are paying you is not millions. Go out there and see how much people are earning and using to take care of families. Go out there. You wear cover up. Go. Bam, do. Shop down. It's like 150. Ah, it's 150. I pay people. Look at the gas they are flaring. You know, not, 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 they're supposed to be paying us like 600,000. <laughs> you realize that when you go out there, eh, bricklayers are building their own house. You finish, you go and settle, settle in beer parlor, be complaining. These are energy people. These are energy people. I know people, buddy. Hey, hey, 100,000. What will I do with 100,000? How, how many beer would I buy now? Money don't finish. And you're an elder. You will now be calling your wife to come and carry you home. Say the money is not enough. Riot just living. But do you realize that you've been this way for five years? It tells you something is wrong. Listen to me. And I say this with all humility. There are young people who have listened to me and have started building houses. They are pastors. A few days, few days, a few months ago, a pastor sent me from Bayelsa. He said, I listened to your series on treasures and waste. I heard what you said. He showed me a property they are currently building. We don't do what we're doing in this ministry because there's one millionaire sending us millions. It's the tithes. 
that you bring every month for those who, who give tithes. The offerings. Those that are built with me, they know. John, Kenneth, all the guys who are built with me. There are certain times they are there that we can't pay for this thing. I'm telling you. Sometimes I'll tell them, listen, you guys, we can't, we can't pay you this month. Keep working. We'll pay you. I mean, they are here. Little by little. I remember a few months ago, we had to tell Kenneth, who managed the electrical stuff, say, you know what? Go to our bar, go and buy all the bulbs in cartons. By, because by the time we calculated it, it's, it will save us close to maybe twenty to 30000 So every month when something is wrong, we just go pick from that carton. We we'll, we'll change. We can decide to be buying from town here, but you realize that it is 30000 extra gone. If you would save a bit and buy certain things in cartons, you would save yourself a lot of money. Every time you want to cook stew, that's where you go and buy fish. Every time you want to cook stew, that's where you go and buy. You would have had the money to buy fridge. No. You have used it to show your friends that God has raised you. Riotous living. And listen, as a church and as believers, we need to have this honest conversation. We need to tell ourselves the truth. God is not wicked. Why does it look like we're not prospering? It's some of these little things. The little foxes that spoils the vine. Calculate how much you earn in a month. Calculate how much you've earned in two years. I've sat with people and I've asked them, how much, how long have you been working? Oh, four years. How much are you earning? This. And I say, let's just total how much you have earned in four years. And they look at the figure. It's surprising. It's as if I'm the one that did the work. Jesus it means it never calculated. They are surprised. Oh, I just like drinking Coke. I just like ice cream. You know, these things I'm telling you, this is where I live. There was a time. Uh, what's that we used to buy on Sunday? It was a burger, right? There was a time we just got married then. And then, I think, I don't know whether we had my son then. We we'll just send this brother to buy burger for us on Sunday. Very nice burger. Ah, after two months, spirit of wisdom spoke in me. This burger, calculate it. Ah, by the time I calculated how much was it for burger, I mean, how much was it then? Maybe 500 or 600 or something. We transport everything. Ah, I said, no, 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 this is not sustainable. And the good thing, the, the way God has created me is that immediately I make that decision, the desire so till today, I still struggle to eat burger. Because that desire is a desire that is going to lead to poverty. You have to kill it. I just like to take shawarma weekly. Just shawarma, just weekly shawarma, weekly. <laughs> See, that thing they are mixing inside that shawarma. You have to stand in front of the mirror and say, I don't like shawarma. I don't. You have to talk to yourself. It might look casual. It might look like, ah, can't we enjoy life? Yes, you can, but not now. We know you've been blessed by this telecast. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video formats. To purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805. 888-7575 or send us an email office at Pastor Max or Angie. Also available are free downloads from www.thepastormax.ng God bless you.